Hey guys, and welcome to today's Lightroom tutorial. Uh, today we're going to learn how to work in post-production with your raw images and how to work with black and white images. Some Im images that you take, you might see them in color. Others, you might see them in black and white. In this particular image, I saw completely in black and white. I was up north in San Francisco uh, visiting Alcatraz for the first time ever, and I've lived here for about 30 years. So <clears throat> it was quite an interesting trip. I wanted to take a few pictures there. I envisioned a lot of my pictures in black and white as it is a prison, very dark, gloomy, uh, very dramatic. So uh, this is what I came up with on the left and on the right is what you see is it's plain image straight out of the camera, nothing done to it. So with that said, let's start working on this image with a few simple tools. You don't really have to complicate it. Uh, just to obtain this image. I will show you my workflow and it doesn't necessarily mean you have to do the exact same thing But at least you'll get a good understanding of what it takes to produce an image Just like this as you can see at the top are all my settings. I shot at a 7.1 So that means my image was pretty sharp. I had a very broad depth of field My ISO was at 160 so it was pretty low It's good to shoot during the day and my uh, shutter speed was at 800 so my image has all the right elements to produce a sharp image. Uh, I did use a center weighted average uh, metering mode as I did want to focus more on this building right here rather than the sky. So my main focus was this, but I knew there was going to be a good balance. So here, here it is. It's not blown out your sky. It's pretty, pretty well exposed. Okay, let's jump into this develop module here and let's start working on this image. Uh, here is the final product and again here's what it looked like before so let's go ahead and start working on this image let me go ahead and reset this so that way we can start from the beginning and I can show you exactly how I obtained it um, let's run down here to the bottom real quick where your camera calibration I'd like to leave it on standard as I have my standard setting um, I drop down all my colors and my saturation and so forth. I'd like to work on it later on in post-production. As you can see, it did brighten up the image a little bit. <clears throat> Adobe Standard. I'll explain what I just told you in another tutorial. Uh, just for now, I'm going to leave it on camera standard. And I'm going to start off by saying I do not switch it to black and white, as you can see here. There are a few reasons. Black and white, black and white you can start by doing that if you'd like, this is all preference, but I like using color as it gives me a lot more flexibility when adjusting, adjusting my highlights and darks and shadows uh, within uh, Lightroom and I'm using color. So let me start by coming down here towards this HSL and I will show you exactly what I mean. Your saturation, here's all your colors. So I'm gonna drop down all my colors. So I'm gonna start with red. There might not be any red, but just in case. Orange, you will see that drop because there is orange in the, uh, in the image. Yellow, same thing. There is yellow in there and dropping that starts making it black and white. Greens, there might be some, like I said, just in case. Drop it, your aquas, purples, and your magentas. Now, just in case I drop it off. We are essentially left with a black and white image. Now you're probably wondering why I saved the blue for last. Well, I just wanted to demonstrate for you that you can isolate colors in Lightroom and enhance those colors over any other color. So as you can see, if I bring it up, I'm just gonna get a little more blue. See. Now, I want it black and white though. So we're gonna drop it all the way down. Now, this black and white image is very bland. Again, there's nothing special about it. So what we want to do, you can start whichever you like. You can start with the sky or you can start with the building. In this case, I'm going to start with the building. Uh, I want to bring a little more detail into the building that it does not exist yet. Well, it exists, but you can't see it. Now, your clarity when working with buildings, um, landscapes, is going to be one of your biggest friends, and you, but you have to use it sparingly. You can't go buck wild on it. Well, you can if you're going for a look. In this case, I want to bring out the details in the buildings and just make it a little more dramatic. So let's bump it up all the way that way you can see. I'm at 100. Now let's compare that to zero. 
huge difference. So your clarity has a lot to do with how dramatic your image is going to look, especially in black and white. So with it being up at 100, you can see that difference right away. Now, we don't have to bring it up all the way. Let's leave it right around 70 or so. I think that's probably good. 71, that, we're good there. Okay, next thing I wanna do is I wanna bring out the shadows right above the door, uh, all this area here. I wanna make it a little more dramatic. I wanted it to pop, separate itself from all this area down here. So to do that, let's go down here to where it says shadows. So here you have your highlights, lights, darks, and shadows, all that good stuff. here. So let's drop down the shadows a little bit here. Because I don't want to affect the entire image. I just want to affect the areas that are, I think, a little more interesting. So enhance what's already there. So I want to leave all this. I don't want to darken this all up just yet. So I just want to drop down the shadows. So now that we've dropped down the shadows, there's already a nice difference there. So if we start comparing to what the image looked like before, and now, definitely a lot more, um, uh, it's definitely a lot more interesting in your image. Also, what you can do is your uh, your blacks. You can bring up your blacks a little bit more. There, not too much. Between blacks, darks, and shadows, play around with those and find a balance that you like. Uh, you can bring down your darks a little bit more. And that looks pretty good right there. Okay, so now that we have some of the building taken care of and I, I think I'm okay with the building. Let's move on to the sky. Now there's a number of things you can do with the sky. First thing we're gonna do is come down to luminance. Remember what I said before, you have full control of each of the colors. So if you come down to luminance and remember we saw the blues, here's our blue. So we're not under saturation. Here's our saturation, we brought down all the colors and here's your luminance. Your luminance basically takes each color and brightens it and darkens it. So if you're working with landscapes and you want to make those colors just be a little more rich, then you want to drop down your luminance. And you have to play with it because you can't drop it all the way or else it'll be completely dark and you'll get some grain and so forth. Or you can brighten up those colors. So in this case, we want to darken the blue a little bit. Now I'm just going to show you, I'm not going to really bring it down that much. But as you can see, it's, you, you start bringing grain into the image. But in this case, with this image, it's all right because I like that little rugged look. So if you want, you can do it. If not, you can always take out some noise there uh, by just moving your noise reduction here where it says luminance, noise reduction. And by doing so, let's zoom in there. Uh, you can take away some of that noise. But then again, you, you sacrifice sharpness of your image because what you're doing is basically uh, smashing all those pixels together it's blending those pixels together so what it would otherwise give you sharp image is now starting to soften up your image so you do want to use that sparingly okay all right so let's make that cloud pop more with a little trick i like to use here and that is my brush tool my brush tool is at the top right here if you click on this little icon here that looks like a brush it'll give you a sub menu now there's a couple of presets here that you can use and you know burn dark and whatever now you can just use a custom and just make it yourself. But in this case, we're gonna darken our image a little bit here. Actually, we're not even gonna use the exposure. We're gonna leave the exposure as it is, and we're just gonna drop down our brightness. Let's say down to about 62. That should be okay. Now, what is the difference between exposure and brightness? Exposure tends to bring down everything at one time, your highlights and darks, versus your brightness tends to affect your shadows first then your highlights so when we paint over this you'll see that it preserves the highlights and won't really bring that down but it will affect the darker areas and let me show you exactly what i mean by that um, and before we start painting on your right here is your flow and your density i leave it high and some people might leave it low but you know the reason why is just you can adjust it later i like to see right off the bat what it's going to look like and if I want to lighten it up and darken it, then I can adjust this. Okay, so let's start painting. Now, look at that. Right away, we start seeing some difference. Huge difference, as a matter of fact, uh, in how things look. Lot, we're getting a lot of detail in the sky now. What was not there before is there now. Now, just step back and look at the image and compare that to this massive difference 
We brought out the detail in the sky. There's some depth to the image and it's starting to look really good. Now, there's one more little thing. Now, I'm not gonna go into too much detail and try and perfect this right now. I just kinda wanna show you guys how all this works and how you can obtain an image. Actually, you know what? That little shadow over the edge looks kinda cool there. Actually, it makes it pop out a little bit more. Okay, one more thing I like to do. Now, you can always add a vignette to your image and vignettes usually give a, a lot more um, depth to your image and it helps you focus on a particular object or subject uh, if you are shooting portraits and vignettes are cool. Uh, we can use a vignette here but for me see it darkens too much of the image and it takes away where exactly I want to be. So in this case I'm going to make a custom one. So again under your brush tool uh, click new and what we're going to do is adjust our exposure in this case. Uh, again, leaving our density and our flow just where it is, you can adjust it later. So let's start making our own vignette. I just want this bottom edge just to be a little more, a little darker, you know, and, and uh, to just give concentration to this area here. It's where I want to lead you. Or when you take pictures, you're always leading the viewer where you want a vignette, you know, so it's not covering the entire image, but just where we want it. I want to kind of focus around the middle area where the door's at, make this more of the highlight. Everything around it really complements it. Um, now, with that being said, I do want to make sure that my gradient uh, between the vignette and the image is smooth. As you can see, there's a bit of a gap there, a uh, step, should I say. So it's not really that smooth. So what I want to do is I'm going to go over here to my eraser tool bring down the flow a little bit and start erasing. Make sure your, uh, your feather's up so you can get a nice transition between, but it's middle here to the door is where I want it to be. All right, that looks, that looks pretty good. Not too bad. Blends in nicely and uh, let's see how that looks. Yeah, so it looks good. So it's not blatantly obvious there's a, a vignette there and, and it brings a little bit more detail. But there's still one more thing I wanna do is bring out the, the highlight in the door. But I don't wanna affect the exposure brightness of the whole image. How do you do that? Well, let's go back to where I said earlier. You have your colors. This is why working in color gives you a little bit more flexibility. Because there is a lot of oranges and yellows in this image, if we bring up the colors the luminance of those colors, it's gonna brighten just that part. So it's not gonna brighten the sky, the floor, or anything else, but just where the building was. So let's start bringing up those yellows and oranges. Look at that, right away we start seeing. So bring up the clarity, you know what, why not? Let's just bring it all the way up. There we go. Looks pretty good. And you can even bring up the contrast a little bit just to yeah, make it a little more dramatic. That is a huge difference between what we saw earlier. Straight out of the camera and on the right, we have what we did in post-production. So granted, not one of my best shots, but I did want to use this as an example how to obtain a everyday image that you wouldn't find interesting and turn it into something. But when somebody looks at it, it's going to be like, wow, that is a huge difference. Now there's a number of ways to obtain this image like you see it, but I find it and my own personal preference that this is the fastest way to obtain this look. Okay, I hope you guys learned uh, quite a bit today. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below or leave me an inbox in, uh, in on YouTube. You can send me a message directly through my channel uh, and I will get back to you. If you have anything you'd like to see, let me know and I will uh, put up a tutorial on that. Uh, in the meantime, you guys have a wonderful weekend, a wonderful week. Whenever you see this, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and share with your friends. I really appreciate everybody's support. Thank you guys all for all your wonderful messages left. I hope I can continue pushing out these videos for you guys uh, so that you guys can start learning how to take excellent photos right away. All right, guys, get out there. Don't be afraid to be creative. And I would enjoy and looking forward to seeing your images. Thank you for everybody who's put their images up so far on Facebook. If you haven't done so, go ahead and do that. Go visit us there, post up your pictures, like us. There's lots of good things that are happening there. All right, you guys, take care.
Oh, 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 oh,